When the AverVision 300 AF was placed in the hands of his students, Dr. Lubig noticed a comparison between the document, camera, and other technologies, but also sees his students applying the concepts to their own fields of study. We work from what we know, and so we try to make what's new to us like other things. And so what I've seen is right now is, um, I guess for lack of a better term, kind of a young use of everything, is it's a lot like PowerPoint. It's a lot like an overhead. It's a lot like, so I see them using it like other things that they already know or they've seen used and, uh, as they're new to it. So right now it's, let's use the image and let's mark it up and let's capture it and freeze it. That's like an overhead, you know? Hey, let's mark it up, let's record something. That's like inserting a sound clip into a PowerPoint slide. So I see a lot of that right now. Um, but even from the demonstration we had today, what is, what, what is nice and why, again, why I want to get them in the hands of the students and then have them actually show us what they're doing is what happened when the student presented today. When Jimmy presented, what started happening was, ah, now how can I use it? Hey, all it took was him talking about his music. Yeah, that's what I said. So that was, you know, this would be your first the intro. And that's the, I think, chorus. Yeah, no, yeah, that's the chorus, and that's the verse, and then bridge. So we're just all looking at my computer and just playing along, and nobody even, you know, we don't have to talk about it or say anything. Just played right through it. So that was pretty cool. Now we have a record deal. I don't know how that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can record the song for it. Yeah. Too. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah. it'd, it'd be interesting in band, you know, if you had a new piece of music that you don't have copies of it. Right. Save the paper, just, put it up well, on the screen. You just make a recording, you know, file the music through, mm -hmm. then play it in front of the entire class the next day, and everyone can just kind of play off of the Yep. Group. Definitely. Or even if you were teaching guitar, you could have that just on your hand so you could show what shape the chord was yeah. and everybody else, rather than, like, trying to see what you're doing over their music stand, or if you're playing piano, you could have it showing your hands. Because like in the piano lab over here, there's um, there's a visual thing that's up and it looks like the piano, but and the little lights will light up. But it'd be a lot nicer if you could actually see mm -hmm. the playing. <laughs> the visual of music is it's it's there's a relationship. It's interactive. The audience has to respond. So as soon as it went from the piece of paper that he had up there to something that wasn't paper, music. Now it became, oh, you could use it in this subject area to do this. And then, you know, and then he's talking about the microscope. Well, how could you make it more interactive, right? See, and again, like, a microscope's cool. I mean, my daughter loves looking at a microscope. My son loves it. But to be able to look into a microscope and then mark that slide up right there on the screen, I mean, that changes, that's different than a PowerPoint. That's different than the transparency. That, that's, again, that's interactive. So. I'm really curious to see how the students play with these over a sustained length of time, but again, with feedback or criticism or critique from, from their peers, because I think that's how it's gonna, it's gonna alter it. I think that's how anything's gonna change and, and improve and, and kind of push, push the boundaries of, of, of what's there.